Okay, we're going to begin chapter 19, the atmosphere in motion. We have four sections. This video is going to be on 19.1, air pressure and wind. So the objectives for 19.1 include define air pressure. Now defining air pressure is the definition. You can make that into a vocabulary word. Uh, you can turn that into a flashcard to help you remember that. So air pressure is the force of air molecules exerted on a given area. That's one of our key ideas. Second is describe how changes in elevation, temperature, and humidity affect air pressure. And then third, explain what makes the wind blow. One major question to try to uh, explain the concepts in this section are what is the relationship between air pressure and wind? I have an intro video there for you as well if you wanted to check that out. Air pressure is caused by the weight of the atmosphere over a given area. It is directed equally in all directions, and air pressure is measured with what's called a barometer. We're going to deal with two different types of air, dry air, humid air. You see the presence of nitrogen and oxygen in dry air, and then water, va or water mm, typically in the form of water vapor, in humid air. Now, changes in temperature and humidity change the air pressure. Humid air is lighter than dry air, so you have a low pressure system on the surface of the planet. This is because water molecules are less massive than oxygen, O2, and nitrogen, N2 molecules. So dry air would be considered a high pressure system. So what is the name of the looping lines on this weather map? Isobars, very good. Now what happens to the isobars that run off the map? Do they just stop? No, they eventually connect beyond the borders of the map. So if you check this map out here, we have at, at all of the points on this isobar, this 1020, the air pressure is 1,020 millibars. Millibars is the unit for air pressure. Now pressure in the high is greater than in surrounding regions. So we see 1,020, 1,024, 1,028. We increase in our air pressure and then we have a high system right here. Now the pressure in a low is less than the surrounding regions. So we go back down here and then the pressure decreases until you get to this point right here, the 996 and within. Isobars that are close together indicate, indicate a strong pressure gradient, and isobars that are farther apart indicate a weak pressure gradient. So where on the map would you expect to find the strongest winds? Very good, where isobars are close. As you can see right here, there's an abrupt change in the, in the air pressure. We go from about a thousand millibars way up to about a thousand sixteen in a very short distance. Now the weakest are where isobars are farther apart. Such as down here, you see the space in between the 1000, 1004, 1008, 1012, 1016. So the larger area, that means this, the weaker winds. Now why is that? Isobars that are close together indicate a strong pressure gradient, whereas those that are far apart indicate a weak pressure gradient. The stronger the gradient, the stronger the wind. The closer they are together, the stronger the wind, the stronger the gradient. Now if air pressure steadily increases toward the center of a set of closed isobars, it is considered a high pressure area. If air pressure steadily decreases toward the center of a set of closed isobars, it is considered a low pressure area or a low. Now dividing the pressure change by the distance over which the pressure changes gives what's w what we call the pressure gradient. Now winds are caused by differences in air pressure. As we know with most substances on the planet, it always travels from high pressure area to a low pressure area. Air movement from high pressure areas to low pressure areas are typical for islands. We also have different types of winds that at different types of days and different types of seasons. But this concept stays true, high to low. Now wind vanes measure wind direction. Anemometers measure wind speed. This is typically done at about 10 meters above the ground. 
that's it for 19.2. See you back here on 19 or 19.1. I'll see you back here in 19.2 to check your understanding of several of the concepts in 19.1. Please look at the section review and answer one through four.